time I come home I sleep really late into that first day that I'm home so it is 10:54. I kind of woke up about I opened my eyes at 8 but I laid in the bed till about 10 just like relaxing uh, good morning Jen Jen you had a good breakfast Denver I'm talking to you come here good morning good morning you did have a good breakfast. I can smell it all on your breath. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Anyways, as y'all saw, I got the day started. I fed the babies. And um, I read a comment. I read what is your your um your YouTube name because I'm bring y'all in a bit. Um but I read a comment on YouTube from Vlogmas Day 3. Y'all know I like to read the comments as they come in and what's your name on youtube lady luxara i think that's how you pronounce it tell me if i'm wrong she says first of all girl you're wrong because clearly aspen is your favorite child parental no no lol second in flight doesn't get lockers i always keep a scarf pantyhose and dress an extra pair of panties in mine so i'm really reading this comment to address the aspen and denver thing so technically I, I do not have a favorite, but you treat your children different. And technically, Aspen is my dog, and Denver is my mother's dog. So Denver is more like my sister, and Aspen is my child. I've had Aspen for nine years, since he was six weeks old. I got him my senior year of college. So we just have a very, very close attachment to one another. Right, Pumpkin? And then Denver, I got Denver's birthday is December 15th. She'll be six this year. And I got her for my mom basically six years ago for a Valentine's Day gift. So she's not necessarily my child, so it's not a parental no-no. But we just have different relationships. Denver is a very chill dog. She doesn't like to be all up on me, as you can tell. Denver's over there in the corner minding her business, and Aspen is always in my face. So that's why it may seem like I show favoritism. But not really, it's just their preferences. <laughs> Anyways, um, just wanted to address that. And while I have it up, let me just go ahead and answer a few questions. I kind of like doing this, and somebody um, commented and said that they liked it too, that I'm just kind of answering the questions via Vlogmas Live for the next day. And it's just really convenient, you know. I respond on here too, but I just, I like doing it this way. So Jamie... Hirschman, hi Jamie, says, Alexia, I love your blogs. I have watched you all the way from applications through training to becoming a great flight attendant. Thank you. I have a question. I know you have dogs. How do you manage your dogs when you're away? I find this the hardest thing to do is leave them and worry about how they are. Would you love to, I would love to see how you manage FA life with family and dogs. Thanks, stay flying. Thank you, Jamie. So I'm blessed because I can leave my dogs here at home. I still In Houston, I still live with my parents because y'all know I'm goal is to buy a house this summer. So I'm here, um, I leave my dogs at home with my mom and my stepdad and my bonus dad. And I don't have any worries, you know, like I know they're being taken care of. They're not maybe as spoiled as when I'm at home because when I'm at home, they get to sleep in my room and in my bed and all of that stuff. But, um, there's no worries with that. Like, I know they're safe and sound. And how how do I balance family life? I mean, I love my family to death. And I like to be there for most things. So usually if I know things in advance, I take off from work and I'll come. Or especially for holidays, like I like to enjoy those things. 
Um, so a lot of the time that I am off work, I usually come home and I'm either spending it with family or really close friends. So, you know, that's the best balance. And just, you know, making sure that we communicate throughout the week. So when I'm gone, you know, I call and check up on them and just, you know, just keep it simple. Then Jamie had another question comment. She says, let me know if you come up with a strategy for how to juggle the luggage. I was keeping a big bag at base and take the smaller roller board and trading out stuff. And trading out stuff, but you got to take it all home and reload sometimes. So I've never really had this issue before, but what was happening in Vlogmas Day 3 while I was in the back room is because I moved from the apartment to a crash pad. And so sometimes you just don't realize how much stuff you collect in an apartment. And of course I had more space and storage space in the apartment. So when I moved to the crash pad, you know, I only have a few drawers to keep clothes and, you know, not closets and all kind of other storage space. So basically I'm just downsizing from one place to another and I was just trying to transition all that stuff back home, which I did yesterday. I brought about five bags worth of stuff back home to Houston. But usually I don't ever have anything in the bag room. I just pack up my roller board and go. Like at the crash pad, the things that I did keep at the crash pad were um, workout clothes, because I go through those like crazy. Um, a few pair of my favorite denim. Um, a few tops and maybe about five pair of shoes. And that's really it, other than like toiletries and things like that. But as far as clothes, and my uniforms are there. Um, but yeah, that's that's all that's at the crash pad. Nathan Say, that's his name, Nathan Say, says, hey friend, been a fan of your channel since you started. Thank you. I think this is my first time asking questions, so hello from Vegas. Two questions, what version of the Bible do you read? And where are these Bible verses coming from? And are you selecting them based on your interests or are they listed somewhere? So I read the King James Version of the Bible. And um, this was actually just a list that I Googled when I was looking for things to kind of do instead of like Advent calendars. And I was looking, you know, I Googled like good deed type things to do for um, 12 days of Christmas. This list just actually popped up. So that's that's what I'm using. It's I'm not selecting them personally. I'm just going based off of the list. Patrice Johnson says, do you have a... Holly retainer? If so, how do you like it? She's referring to Vlogmas Day 2, where I did my little bathroom routine in the morning and I took out my retainer. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm going to have to Google real quick what a Holly retainer is, or if I'm even pronouncing that right. Um, I just have an old school OG retainer. Uh, yeah, I guess that is what I have. <laughs> I have no idea um, but I'm from googling it that's the picture that comes up and that's what I have um, so yes I have that version of a retainer um, and I like it so I've had I had braces when I was I got braces when I was 13 got them taken off when I was 15 and um, I have a missing tooth right here um, and I just never decided to get a bridge like I didn't really care um, so my retainer has a, a little tooth on it that holds the space so my teeth won't gap. So that's really why I wear the retainer every night, just to like maintain the spaces in my mouth. And you know, my mama paid a lot of money for the braces, so might as well keep them nice. Um, so yeah, I like the retainer. I have the other one too, that um, like the little clear one, like the Invisalign style like thing. Um, I never wear it though. It, like, like, it, it's hard to talk and I don't like that. Christopher Hennessy says, do you prefer to work with guys? As a male RN, I always receive comments from female coworkers where they prefer to work with the guys. Um, I'm not gonna say I necessarily prefer to work with them. Um, my queen of the crew vlogs, they're just fun to call it that. At work, I just like people that do their job because as a flight attendant, you don't wanna have to stay on top of anybody to make sure that they're doing their job. It's a very independent job. I've said this before, it's a very independent job, although that you still work with people. You don't check in with the manager every day. Nobody can tell you when and where to go, you know, like things like that. So do I like working with guys? I do enjoy working with guys. I don't mind working with guys. I don't mind working with girls. It's all about personality. You know, you got a lot of guys that are really flamboyant. You got some that are really laid back and relaxed and chill. I'm a really laid back, relaxed, chill type of personality. So, you know, I think I probably mesh better with those. 
But if people are like, you know, very extra, I don't mind that either. As long as you respect people's space. I don't care if you're male, female, undecided. I don't care. Like, just do your job. We can have nice conversations on the jump seat. Or if you want to sit there and read your book all day and not talk, that's fine with me too. Transit Review 212 says, love your content. Will you be vlogging your Aruba trip? Yes, I will be vlogging Aruba. So for my vlogmas, I do vlogmas like literally I vlog every single day and I post that. So I don't have any videos that I've recorded before or do I, I don't plan on like doing any pre-recorded style videos either for vlogmas. I like the idea of vlogmas like really being like, what am I doing with my every day for that month of December and just taking y'all along with it. So, yeah, I'll be vlogging Aruba because it's during vlogging. F9 Rocks says, not sure if this has been asked before, but how do you balance being a realtor and a flight attendant? Truth be told, it was a really hard balance, um, especially being on reserve. So, I actually get asked this question a lot via email on, on my Instagram. People will DM me because, you know, there's a lot of flight attendants that are realtors and realtors that want to become flight attendants and vice versa. And... I literally just answered this question the other day to somebody the biggest issue so to answer your question my balance right now is whatever clientele that comes to me I just refer them out and collect a referral fee to my mommy because my mom and my stepdad are both realtors so you know of course I trust her she's gonna do great business because for me right now the the hardest thing about being a realtor is having that balance of being here like I like to work with buyers, so you have to have a lot of available time. You need to be in the city to be able to show them homes and things like that. And I don't have that time right now. That's my goal, that's what I'm working towards is being able to be at home more often, have more of a set schedule where I fly um, Monday through Thursday off on the weekends or you know whatever I can get to work so that I can get back into the full swing of real estate. But I'm not all the way there yet. So as of right now, you know, if I have people come to me, um, I just refer them out to another realtor, aka mommy, and um, collect a referral fee. That's the easiest way to do it right now. But if you are a real estate agent, and um, I think it would be a lot easier if you're based in your, your city where you sell real estate. So if you're based there and that's where you sell real estate, it's easier for you to have a balance. But for me, since I'm in New York, and I sell real estate in Texas. It's not it's not the easiest thing to do. So Alexi McFarland says, and she's commenting on my face-to-face -face interview um, tips video. She says, hi Alexi, a new subscriber. Thank you so much for this information, so helpful. I have a face-to-face -face next week in Houston for United and I'm so excited. Maybe you can answer this. Is it safe to say that depending on where the flight attendant is based, is contingent upon their salary for United or any airline? Based in New York has a higher salary being based in Houston or is it a universal starting base? Looking forward to your response. So, <clears throat> good question. All airlines start every applicant off at the same amount. It doesn't matter your experience, it doesn't matter where you're based, it doesn't matter. So if you come to the airline that's near and dear to my heart, our starting pay is $21 an hour right now. They can send you to Long Beach, New York, Boston, Fort Lauderdale, or Orlando. Everybody starts off at $21 an hour and that is the same for every single um, commercial airline based in the US. Nobody starts off at a different um, pay rate. It's not something that you can negotiate. It is what it is and then they just send you to the base that is available. So you can you can find their pay rate. I'm sure it probably says it on the application. It usually says starting pay right there in bold letters. It's, it's a non-negotiable thing and then they just send you to whatever base um, that they need you to go to in that time. Yeah, so I think that's it for questions for today. All right, so let me go ahead and read the reason for the season Bible scripture of the day. It is Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Amen to that. So y'all can go and decipher that 
however you want. So this is the good thing. So like this scripture, I honestly um, didn't know this one as well. So I had to actually go and read and see what the whole um, the passage was talking about and things like this. So this is just helping me learn the Bible even more. And I hope it's helping you too if you're into it. Anyways, so y'all are probably wondering why I have on this yellow beanie and yellow sweater. So <laughs> I was just in my room just looking for something to throw on. And I found this and this from like years ago. So this hoodie thing is from Victoria's Secret. I probably, I had to have bought this in college because I don't even shop at Victoria's Secrets anymore. College was from 2006 to 2010. So that just tells you how old this thing is. Then this beanie on my head. Um, was back from the days that I worked at Ralph Lauren or the polo store. I worked at two different um, stores. I mean, I bought this specifically for an 80s style skate rink party. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever worn it since then. So the point of me saying that is that today I'm going to be cleaning out my closet. I'm going to do some spring cleaning or it's winter. Is it even winter yet? But anyway, fall slash winter cleaning. We're going to clean this closet out. We're going to see what I should keep and what I should toss. All right, let's get to it. So I am officially off of reserve for the day. <laughs> it is 2.05 p.m. East Coast time. My reserve ended at 1.45 p.m. and they did not call. So one more day tomorrow. We'll make it through all the way in Houston, Texas. <laughs> all right, guys, so I'm back. I've spent portion of the day going through my closet, the dress section of my closet, just trying to declutter. And I've come across quite a few pieces that I don't know if I should keep or trash. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have a little fashion show with y'all. And you tell me, should I keep it or trash it? So this is the first number. Right? It's cute. This is just a little black dress. It's Ralph Lauren, green label. I think I've worn it a few times. What do y'all think? Keep it or trash it? All right, next. So this little number I got from a cute little online boutique called Desirable Closet. I wore this for my 29th birthday. Never worn it again. <laughs> like most of the things in my closet. Keep or trash? All right, so this one, number three, this little dress I got from H&M. I wore it to my cousin's um, graduation. That was a few years ago, <laughs> I don't remember when. Um, and I've never worn it again. So, what do we think? Keep or trash? Okay, this little piece is from Zara. I wore this last year to my barber's wedding. Really love it. I already think I'm gonna keep this one, not trash it, because I have an idea. I've only worn it once, of course, but I just realized that I can wear this again for a party towards the end of the year. Keep it or trash it. All right, now we have this number. This little dress came from Topshop. What do y'all think? This cute little, and if y'all can't really tell the color, it's like baby pink with a little shimmer to it. I really don't remember what occasion I bought or wore this dress for. I remember wearing it to one of my friend's birthday parties, but that's not the reason why I bought it. But what do you think? I think I might get rid of it because we're having this midsection here. It ain't flat enough for all of that yet. Yes or no? All right. Our next one is another little blush pink dress. This is from Forever 21. I'm thinking I'm gonna trash this one for the same reason because of this midsection. Sorry, Aspen's paws are just tiptoeing everywhere. This color is just not forgiving on the bumps and lumps that you don't want to show. So y'all let me know, keep or trash. All right, she's next. She's cute. She's money green. We like her. This dress is from Forever 21. I wore this Christmas 2016. What do y'all think? It's like a little half turtleneck type of deal. It's kind of cute. I think we can keep her. Keep her or trash her. Aww. So 
y'all, we're not gonna trash this dress. So let me just show y'all. <laughs> she don't even wanna act like she's gonna zip up. This is the dress that I wore when I first got my real estate license and I took my professional business pictures. Um, this dress we're gonna keep because this is gonna be a goals dress, okay? The goal is to get back into her fully zipped and snatched. Like, I was so snatched in those pictures. Okay, so we're gonna keep her and we're gonna make sure that she fits soon. So, how cute is this one? It's very short. This is a little party dress. I wore this to my aunt's 55th birthday party three years ago. I got it from some little boutique just where I randomly found. So I couldn't tell you where. But what do y'all think? Keep it or trash it? All right, so our next number, this little gray dress. I don't know where I got this from. I definitely ordered it somewhere online. I wore this to in Mexico for my sister's 40th birthday one night that we went out. I think I've already made up my mind that I'm going to trash this one because the strings are kind of pulling, but it was cute then. <laughs> All right. This is cute. I wore this dress I got from Nasty Gal on my website. I think I wore this for my 27th or 28th birthday party. Never wore it again. Keep it or trash it. All right. This little blue number I wore to Vegas a few years back, 2014 or 15. My best friend's at that short party we had a night that all the ladies wore blue. And this is the dress that I wore. It's from Zara, my favorite store. What do y'all think? Keep it or trash? All right, last but definitely not least. This little cute black baggage dress. It's from BB. I wore this dress, I'm gonna say maybe like five years ago to a college homecoming party. And I've worn it a few times since then, but it, it was always tight, but it wasn't suffocating. <laughs> so what do y'all think? It's a good little black dress. I, know. I think I should keep it. Let me know. Keep it. We're trash. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed that quick little fashion show. And just to clarify, well, one thing I remembered, the red dress, that's the gold dress, that's from Zara. So I just, you know, attached all my Zara pieces. Um, and when I say trash, I don't literally mean the trash. I would never throw away good clothing. Um, so I'll either be giving it to Goodwill or putting it in one of the Purple Heart donation boxes that are just placed um, in parking lots and things like that. But either way, they will go to someone worthy, someone that is in need of clothing because I clearly have way too much that I can't even fit anymore. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed Vlogmas Day 4. Um, and I will see you all tomorrow. Until then, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Bye!